Hello, my name is Felix Torso and I am a curatorial assistant at the Wallace Collection in London. In this talk we will discuss the interior decoration of the Royal Palace of La Granja de San Ildefonso during the reign of King Philip V in the first half of the 18th century. In a previous lecture on this series dedicated to the interior decoration of Philip V's Royal Alcazar in Madrid, we saw how a traditional Spanish Habsburg palace from the late 17th century was converted into a fashionable residence with a strong French influence. On this occasion, we move forward in time to the second half of Philip V's reign, marked by his marriage with the Italian princess Elizabeth Farnese and the influence this queen and her entourage had over the cultural life at court. Philip V was the first Bourbon monarch in Spain. He was crowned in 1700, soon after he married Maria Luisa Gabriela of Savoy, who accompanied Philip as his consort queen until her premature death in February 1714. On that same year, a new consort queen was found, Elizabeth Farnese. Elizabeth was born at the Palazzo della Pilota in Parma, where she received an exquisite education. She showed an early appreciation for the arts and became a great patron of artists. The construction and decoration of this palace known as La Granja de San Ildefonso exemplifies the change of taste experienced at the Spanish court with the arrival of Elizabeth Farnese. The hunting forests of Balsaín in the Segovian mountains of Guadarrama belonged to the crown of Castile since the Middle Ages. In 1477, the Catholic monarchs gave the existing sanctuary dedicated to St. Ildefonsus to a community of Huronite monks, who transformed the space in a country house and farm, while the forests surrounding this property continued to be used by the royal family. Philip V, who fell in love with the place, bought the small property back from the monks with the intention of using it as a place in which to retire from royal duties, after abdicating in favour of his son, Louis I, in 1724. The construction of a palace was linked to the development of its surrounding parkland into lavish gardens in the French taste, designed by René Carlier. The aim was to create a modest palace following Spanish traditions. The king's architect, Teodoro Ardemans, created a square building with two levels around a courtyard and square towers surmounted by spires on each corner. Only the shape of a rectangular chapel protruded the square plan of the building. Its interior decoration was not of excessive luxury. Following the king's wishes, the rooms were decorated in a sober traditional fashion, far from the cumbersome court etiquette, but comfortable enough as to enjoy his favourite pastimes of tennis, hunting and reading. The interiors followed the Castilian tradition of whitewashed walls, with tiles from Talavera on floors and dados for the royal apartment. The effect was probably not dissimilar to the interiors of the Royal Algazar or El Escorial. The ceilings were vaulted, and the mouldings on wooden doors and windows were finished in gold leaf. Tapestries covered the plain white walls of the principal rooms, most of them were produced at the recently founded Royal Manufactory of Santa Barbara, although some were reused from the Royal Collections and some others were bought from aristocratic collections. In 1721, René Carlier was asked to supply maps for the Royal Bedroom. The drawings served to organise the disposition of tapestries, which were used to cover walls during the cold winter and were substituted by paintings during the warm summer months. The rooms were situated on the first floor, facing the garden. They consisted of a bedroom connected to a private oratory, a traditional pairing inherited from the Hasburg etiquette that, through the 18th century, would be replaced by the combination of bedroom and boudoir. The monarch's bedroom was rectangular in shape, with two doors that led to a balcony from which they could enjoy the views of the garden. Opposite the windows, at the centre of the wall, was a four-poster bed, or lit à l'imperial, covered with bed hangings. The next room was accessed 
through an inner side door. Galia's third drawing shows the oratory. It had an altar attached to the wall, opposite the window that opened towards the garden. The chimney was on the opposite wall coming from the bedroom. Two service doors opened on either side of the chimney. This room must have been quiet and private, more so than the actual bedroom, since its, its entrance didn't align with the bedroom's door towards the antechambers, but was situated on the inner side. This unusual asymmetry was inherited from the existent Hieronymite building, which modification was kept to a minimum in order to speed up the construction works. La Granja allowed the royal couple the possibility of creating new interiors on a blank canvas. Their wish was to furnish the rooms exclusively with newly made furniture, but time and money were short, and it was decided to cherry-pick some objects from the royal collections. The most renowned group of furniture and decorative arts objects by that time in Madrid was that of the Con Dauphin, an ensemble that included furniture, bronzes, gems and vessels that had belonged to Philip V's father. Among other pieces, the king received three beds à l'imperial, a novelty in the Spanish royal collections with their canopies above the bed. All three beds were accompanied by matching sets of seating furniture. One of them, a crimson damask with gold embroidery, was accompanied by ten chairs, four armchairs and sixty-two stools. A second bed was covered with white damask and golden silk embroidery in various colors, including five chairs, eight X-frame stools and three benches. The seating furniture in these two sets had baluster-shaped legs in carved gilt wood, characteristic of the Louis XIV style that dominated the previous century. They were probably not dissimilar to the armchair represented in Rigaud's portrait of Philip V dated 1701 and painted before the young king's departure to Spain. These pieces, possibly already considered old-fashioned by the time they were sent to Madrid in 1716, still retained the aura of grandeur and dignity that was appropriate for a king's dwelling. The marquetry furniture sent to Madrid formed a far smaller group. It included the novelty in the Spanish royal collections, pieces covered in a combination of ebony, brass and turtle shell, known as bull marquetry, after the renowned cabinet maker André Charles Bull. Among this furniture, a console table with two drawers, two coffers on stands and five candle stands, similar to the one shown in the image and belonging to the Wallace collection. Two splendid chests of drawers finished with floral marquetry were also sent to La Granja. These two pieces are the only known surviving furniture from the Grand Dauphin's inheritance. They now take pride of place at the reception room in the Zarzuela Palace, the official residence of the current Spanish monarchs. The beautiful marquetry combines realistic flowers, birds and butterflies with heraldic elements such as dolphins and interlaced L's. Predominantly of square shape, these chests of drawers have been dated around 1700 and 1715 and have been attributed to Aubertin Godron, cabinet maker of Louis XIV. Completing the ensemble, there were French clocks and bronzes, such as these after the famous sculptoric group known as the Farnese Bull. With the unexpected death of Louis I in 1724, only seven months after becoming king, Philip V returned to the throne, much to his regret. For the palace of La Granja, this meant that it ceased to be the permanent residence of Philip V and Elizabeth Farnese, who moved back to the royal Alcazar in Madrid, and this palace became their summer residence. To be able to house the whole court during the summer months, the Italian architect Andrea Procaccini proposed an extension and refurbishment that lasted 10 years, from 1724 until his death in 1734. Procaccini brought from Italy other artists that would help him in various disciplines, Sempronio Subisati in architecture, Domenico Maria Sani in paintings and furniture, as well as other Italian carpenters and gilders. 
Procaccini added two protruding wings on either side of the palace entrance that created a U-shaped courtyard known as Patio de Coches or Carriages Court. A similar solution was conceived for the other side of the palace in the Patio de la Herradura. The detailed ornamentation of this playful architecture blurs the boundaries between indoors and outdoors, an appropriate approach for a summer palace surrounded by magnificent fountains and gardens. It is around this courtyard, towards the garden, that the new royal apartments were installed, freeing the centre of the palace for spaces of representation. New console tables were commissioned for the decoration of these rooms. Made of carved and gilt wood with, ja with a jasper top, they follow French examples such as the furniture inherited from the Grand Dauphin. Since the use of the palace was restricted to the summer months, the use of thick tapestries to cover the walls was discarded, and paintings on canvas were chosen instead. They were mounted on simple gilt frames, and hung tightly from the dado to the corners in the Italian manner. Gilding was also employed in door and window frames, door handles and keyholes. Procaccini died at La Granja in 1734, and the works continued under the supervision of the Queen's confidant, the Marquis Annibale Scotti. In 1735, Filippo Giovarra arrived in Spain, his first intervention at La Granja was to finalise one of Procaccini's projects, a long gallery that occupied a whole new wing. However, Duvara projected a newly designed gallery with a more prominent political meaning. This was known as the Salón de las Empresas del Rey, or Hall of the King's Ventures, where Philip V was compared to Alexander the Great through paintings and decorations. Works started in 1742, but they were not finished by 1746, year of Philip V's death. The only surviving element of this gallery is a design by Giacomo Vanavia for the stucco decoration of the vaulted ceiling, dated 1745. In an exuberant Rococo manner, Vanavia divided the immense space into three center, central medallions that would have received fresco decorations. Military trophies populate the design in allusion to the theme proposed by Juvara. Before his death in 1736, Juvara also projected the facade towards the garden, finished by Sacchetti, and inside the palace, their majesty's bedroom, known as the lacquer room. Situated almost at the end of the first floor enfilade, this space responded to the queen's desire to have a room decorated with lacquer panels. Juvara had experienced designing a similar room, the magnificent Cabinetto Cinese at the Palazzo Reale in Turin. A series of four oval-shaped canvases representing scenes from the life of Jesus were commissioned to the Parmesan painter Giovanni Paolo Pannini, who created masterful perspective compositions of classical architecture. Completing the decoration were two overdoor canvases by the Roman Andrea Locatelli. The walls in the locker room were covered with rich materials. The dado combines geometric marble slabs in different colours, yellow, green and red. On the walls, over a light blue damask, lacquer panels of various origins were placed, some from Asia, probably China known as Coromandel lacquer, some are 17th century English known as Japanin, others are Venetian Lacca di Arte Povera, and some others are Spanish pieces known as Teroles. Originally, there were 45 lacquer panels in total, 12 pilasters in black lacquer decorated with birds, human figures and flowers, 16 triangular panels in pink lacquer surrounding the oval-shaped paintings by Panini, six panels in red lacquer decorated with rocky landscapes, one of them lost, eight black lacquer panels with scenes in colours and gold in original complex shapes surrounding the red panels just mentioned, and three green lacquer panels with half-relief figures surrounding the window. The large rectangular space left by the bed when this room ceased to be the royal bedroom was filled with long black panels. The walls are articulated with pilasters surmounted by ionic capitals decorated with female hands 
and swags of flowers. The slightly domed ceiling was decorated with fresco paintings by Bartolomeo Rusca, representing the story of Diana and Endymion. An appropriate subject for this room, since it's known that it was the queen who cared for his husband's needs while he was asleep, especially during the king's hell-frequent crisis. The cosmopolitan and refined late Baroque elements decorated in this room characterized Juvara's designs in Spain and Italy. Nonetheless, Juvara is aware of a more modern contemporary Rococo sensibility that appear on smaller details such as the cartouches on the corners and the small decorative elements at the base of each pilaster. The last room in the enfilade of Juvara's royal apartment on the first floor was the Queen's boudoir. It was originally decorated with mirrors that covered the walls almost entirely, alternated with panels of Spanish lacquer with small shaves or brackets where objects of Chinese porcelain from the Queen's collection were put on display. We can only imagine the decoration in this room through descriptions and old photographs prior to the fire that in 1918 destroyed this part of the building. Once Sacchetti finished the imposing garden facade following Juvara's designs, attention was diverted towards the space left behind. The royal apartment was moved here, so that the royal couple could enjoy the majestic view of the gardens. From the beginning, La Granja had been an exception to the rest of the royal residences, because king and queen shared the same apartment. When it was a palace for retirement, this lack of separation was understood, but later the intimate and dependent character of the king cemented this arrangement. Almost exclusively Italian artists worked in the new royal apartment, Sempronio Subisati as an architect, Giacomo Bonavia in charge of the interior decorations, particularly the stucco ceilings, Sani of the furniture, and Carlo Antonio Bernasconi of the marble floors. Some designs for new chimney pieces surmounted by mirrors were commissioned to Bonavia, who provided a drawing showing two options. The intention was to send this design to Paris to be executed by French craftsmen, renowned for their technical abilities. However, the exuberant interpretation of Hokai elements on this design aligns more with an European take, typical of Northern Italy and Central Europe, rather than with a subtle French sensibility. In the end, possibly due to time constraints and lack of funds, this project was never executed. Instead, it was decided to bring existing pieces to speed up the project. The chimney pieces brought to La Granja in 1743 were the only purely French element present in this decorative scheme. Two of them came from the Grand Dauphin's collection, while two other were those designed by René Carlier in 1712 for the Royal Alcazar. Only the piece for the King's bedroom in the Alcazar is present in the Palace of La Granja, used now in the room known as the Queen's Cabinet. Giacomo Bonavia also supplied designs for new marble floors in 1742. They were to replace the existent tile floors that had caused some damp problems. With the intervention of the Marquis Scotti, marble slabs were ordered to Genoa. Although with some delay, finally in 1745, the marble floors were installed following their Majesty's advice of which design to use on each room. They were ensembled together by the marble artist Bernasconi of Lugano. Only six rooms received marble floors during this campaign, among which the oratory, their majesty's bedroom and the queen's cabinet. Some designs were repeated, such as the octagonal floor, which was also reproduced on the ground floor. The rest of the rooms on the first floor received their marble flooring in the 1760s, under the French Hubert du Mandré. From 1742 to 1743, the team headed by Giacomo Bonavia and Bartolomeo Rusca completed the ceiling decorations on the first floor apartment. First, Bonavia 
produce the stucco decorations that acted as frames in which Ruska added the fresco scenes. Finally, gilding was applied by the Spanish Prospero de Mortola. In March 1746, Ruska drafted a report informing that all the decorations were finished with the exception of the paintings for the three central rooms on the ground floor. With the unexpected death of Philip V in July of the same year, all works were stopped, and Ruska moved to Madrid, where he worked for the Spanish aristocracy. In some rooms, such as their Majesty's bedroom, Bonavilla designed a series of complex perspectives and architectural views around the cornice that seemed to open towards blue skies. It is a typically Italian design, with a trombleuil balustrade, convex and concave walls articulated with pilasters, and an accumulation of painted architectural elements derived from classical traditions. At the centre, Ruska depicted the marriage of Cupid and Psyche, an allegory of the heavenly union formed by the royal couple. On the ground floor, Bonavia created a series of rooms in enfilade towards the garden, where it was possible to display the outstanding collection of sculptures acquired by Philip V in 1724 from the heir of Queen Christina of Sweden, in addition to that acquired from the Duchess of Alba. Directly underneath the Majesty's bedroom was the Fountain Room, where Bonavia gives free rein to his Rococo designs, inspired by Parisian Rococo residences from the 1730s, although in a more voluptuous fashion. These new rooms were populated by new pieces of furniture that follow French and Italian traditions. There was a great variety of seating furniture that, in addition to chairs, armchairs, stools, and bergers, included the chairs, day beds, and benches. These sets were either bought from Paris, such as the pieces from the Grand Dauphin, or made at La Granja's Royal Workshop by Spanish craftsmen in the French taste. 24 Japan chairs with cane seats imported from England, as well as Spanish copies known as charoles, were inventoried mostly in the rooms associated to the Queen's private use. Unfortunately, none of these pieces have been identified. The Genoese Bartolomeo Steccone created a series of console tables for La Granja, possibly after designs by Juvarra. They included two console tables with figures representing Europe and America that formed a group with two similar ones decorated with flower garlands a second group decorated with chimeras, and a fair series of eight console tables with lion's heads above the legs. These pieces in carved and gilt wood follow the Italian tradition of the mid-18th century. They were all originally covered with jasper slabs, later replaced by marble tops. Another console table of rectangular outline and baluster-shaped legs has been attributed to Juvara. This decorated with an imposing seashell at the front and a flower garland, also of a marked Italian Baroque character, following 17th century examples. Completing the decoration were lamps, bronzes, clocks, and porcelain objects that populated the console tables and chimney pieces on the first floor apartments. The Queen was a true collector. In her inventory are listed more than 50 18th century Chinese covered vases, known as tibores, in various sizes and colors, but predominantly of the green and pink families. They were placed on wooden, carved, and gilt stands along the rooms on either side of the chimney pieces. This piece, produced in China during the Qing dynasty on the first half of the 18th century, belongs to the famille Rose. Its outline echoes the bombus shapes that were favoured in chest of drawers and console tables during the first half of the century. Each of its sides shows an elongated oval reserve decorated with scenes where peonies, chrysanthemums and cherry blossom serve as support to pheasants and swallows. Framing the reserves, small pink tea flowers 
are combined with butterflies, and the lid is surmounted by a gilded lion made in papier mache. Overall, the decoration of this vase mirrors that of the vaulted ceilings in which complicated shapes of stucco frame allegorical scenes. The Queen also collected Blanc de Chine pieces such as this food dog contemporary to the vase. These pieces, removed from their original context, were no longer valued for the meaning or symbolism, but were appreciated for their material qualities and craftsmanship instead, such as the vivid colors and detailed representation of beds and flowers in the vase, and the whiteness of the porcelain paste in the dog. Philip V loved this place so much that he decided to be buried here breaking with the centuries-long tradition of royal burials at El Escorial. When Elizabeth died in 1766, she was reunited with her husband. The memory of this remarkable royal couple is forever linked to the palace of La Granja de San Ildefonso. I would like to thank the Spanish Embassy in London for this opportunity and all of you for listening. Thank you.